Hello, my name is Isaiah, and in this video we're going to talk about overclocking the GTX 1650. I have a written review up already, you can check the video and the art written article in the link below, but this video covers how to overclock the video card itself. For this video, I'm going to use MSI Afterburner and MSI Combustor. So it's not necessary to own an MSI video card, uh, but for this video, I, I do have an MSI Gaming X video card, uh, and I'm going to use the uh, MSI software. You can use any software you want for overclocking. It just happens to be that MSI provides pretty good software, so that's what I'm going to be using anyways. If you've seen my past overclocking videos, you'll know that I used to use... Uh, heaven benchmark and it's still very good it's free it does looping but i feel like it's kind of um, gone the way of the dinosaur it's kind of outdated now it no longer stresses the video card so what i like to do when you first launch msi afterburn if you never used it before this is what it's going to look like and it can be a little overwhelming because a lot of sliders and menus but really all you need to know from the very basics is what you're looking at here. So by default, your video card is controlling its own fan speed, so you don't have to touch this at all. If you want to add a custom fan speed, you can go to the gear symbol, you can go to the fan, and you can enable it. That means allows you to basically bend the fan curve to what you want it to do. Let's cancel that for now. So now all NVIDIA video cards have a voltage limit. So if you were to take the slider and put it to 100%, you're not going to blow up your card. It's literally just going to allow the video card to reach its match potential. But with that being said, if you watch my boost video, uh, you can see the link below. The short version is the more voltage you have, the more heat is created, the more heat is created potentially the lower clock speed you get because the video card is kind of on a dynamic slider so the more power you put into the video card the higher the hotter it gets and potentially the lower the clock speed if this is grayed out for you what you can do is click on the gear symbol and then under general you'll see unlock voltage control it'll be not checked and then you have unlock voltage monitoring and you can turn both those on when you hit OK it'll want you to restart the program no no big deal you just do that and you're back to where you I am right here so the first thing I have to do like I said if you follow my other videos or you just watch the boost video I like to raise the power limit um, and temperature limit once again explain the boost video this doesn't actually damage your card all it does is allow the video card to draw more power and have a higher temperature limit for before it starts clocking down clocking itself so next part i like to do here is once you have what you want to set up fan curve any of that stuff i like to use the auto overclocking function it's in all the touring video cards and it's very helpful you just press this and tell it to start scanning okay so now i have my scan complete uh, you want to make sure you uh, save it so you can click here and you tell it to save and now your settings are saved you see where it says curve that means that this is the new plot line for voltage to clock speed ratio so when you have one volt it supposedly will be at 2000 megahertz uh, once again this is based on the slider uh, how much voltage how much heat uh, it all comes into factory. So maybe two gigahertz is the target, but if you have um, enough voltage, you can go higher. If you're running too hot, it goes lower. So it's kind of a, a, a sliding scale there. Now, once you have that applied, you can go ahead and open MSI Combustor. Once it's open, what I have to do, it doesn't matter what resolution, it's gonna put the video card on load. You, you want to make it sure that you can actually still use MSI Afterburner. So I like to leave it in window mode and um, kind of put it in the background. So this is the program running. It's just going to loop forever. It gives you a temperature. It tells you what the potentially load is. And if it doesn't crash, that's pretty good. So 
you could go ahead and manually start increasing this if you wanted to. Um, if you weren't using a sliding scale and you just had the default numbers, you would enter these manually. So you can either move a slider or enter it. So plus 200 crashes the program, as you see here. Nope, I crashed the program. Ooh, I think I crashed the computer. All right, so that's a perfect example of what happens when you hit a limit. This is why I like the overclocking, auto overclocking function, because you don't have to worry about manually increasing it a little bit, a little bit until it crashes. This pretty much gets you very close to what you're going to see in a limit anyways. And you see the video card is boosting itself up to 2025. This is where I'm talking about the voltage. The MSI cards actually have a limit of this voltage right here, 1.013. If you raise it, it doesn't make a difference. If you happen to have a video card that isn't an overclocking mo over over pre overclocked model like I have for the Gaming X, you might see a lower voltage, and then this slider allows you to go up above that. So once you're satisfied with the curve, the voltage curve, the temperature, the fan curve, all that, then you want to start focusing on the memory. Now I do suggest running this combustor in the background for a while. As you see, the temperature is 70 Celsius. Usually, like I said, you're not going to see the scale this high. This is pushing the car to its limits, which is great for testing out overclocking. But when you're playing video games, you're not going to see your video card just toasty usually. So we're back here and you want to go to artifact scanner and turn that on and then run test. What this does is just allows it to scan for errors in the video card. Now this is a very boring image to look at. All MSI's combustor program is doing is rendering this image over and over again and it's scanning for issues or anomalies in the picture you see in front of you. If it sees an issue in it, then it, re it reports that in the corner and bottom that says artifacts. So the first thing I like to do, as long as I can see down here, is just start raising that number. I usually go about 100 at a time. You can use a slider or type it in. I'm just going to use a slider. And once again, remember this also, memory has its own temperature limit. So if you raise the frequency and it looks great for five minutes in half an hour when you're still gaming and stressing the video card, that temperature might be higher than it was before and then you start getting artifacts. So I suggest if you find that limit, run it longer and see if you have artifacts. So I know this card from previous testing at least does 400. You see where the number starts changing there? That means the memory is on the cusp of having errors. So you want to continually back it off until you get uh, to a number where you feel it's safe. Um, you've run it for a long time and there's zero artifacts there. So there you have it. This is a very quick version, a quick guide, I should say, for overclocking the GTX 1650. If you want more information about Boost 4.0, you can check out my other video in the description below. Just stay tuned for more videos about overclocking. And thanks for watching.